So I'm continuing my series about what happens if a certain city gets nuked and will you survive? I've sat several people around Los Angeles, one of the most populated areas in the United States, and this is simulating an all-out counter-value strike by Russia and China, ICBM, sub-launch missiles, and bombers. Um, just a general attack plan. So we'll kind of examine here depending on where people are located, would they survive or not? So I've kind of stationed people all around the Los Angel greater Los Angeles area. So first thing I'm doing is calculating casualties. Um, got people as far as way as San Bernardino. Um, just some places relevant to friends and family. So, uh, see here in this attack, United States overall, over 97 million casualties. Puerto Rico, a million, Canada, a million, Mexico, almost a million. A lot of fallout um, deaths for this U.S. and close to the United States. See a significant amount of fallout pattern there. Um, let's look at some individuals. Those. <coughs> excuse, me. Uh, excuse me. So starting out here and uh, Ventura, this gentleman uh, is in a building still, almost certain death within two-week period due to severe radiation sickness. Uh, only light things originally. Anaheim survived. Um, got Purdue, some definite effects, but survivable. Um, in the house, survival. Out in the open, you die. Uh, Compton, likely death. Covina, fine. Lindell, some short-term effects. Possible long-term effects, but you're going to probably survive in a house. Inglewood in a vehicle, most certain death within a few weeks. Irvine in a building, collapse, building dead. Los Angeles, uh, kind of centralized area, surviving. Uh, bunker a thousand feet underground, survive. Uh, you just kind of see a runner through this stuff pretty quick. Ontario, survivable. Oxnard. Likely death. Uh, but Jorge and Gracie is Torrance, California. I just know Jorge has to go to school there. Um, and this is just a generalized attack. It really depends on where the bombs are going to fall. That's a big factor in this. Upland and a house just survive. I got family that lives in Upland and Ontario for that matter. Um, so, again, tons of casualties, but depending on where they are, it is survivable. Uh, I'm going to transition to localized single detonations. First one here is going to simulate a Chinese uh, Dofang 4A, which is 3.3 megaton bomb at a 500 meter height detonation, just over the most densely populated part of Los Angeles. Uh, one of the things you're going to take away right away is even in a thousand foot underground reinforced concrete bunker, still showing death due to the building being crushed. And that goes along with the prevailing thoughts. Um, even NORAD, which is heavily reinforced, if it hits a direct strike, death is almost certain for the people inside. And that's got a crazy, like, shock system underneath a the bunker there. It's, it's really fascinating. I need to do a video just on that. What you see here is, though, around that central Los Angeles area, uh, death and some significant injuries, but as soon as you get a little bit past Montebello, Compton, Inglewood, uh, Torrance, almost exclusively no injuries, no significant impact. So San Bernardino, Covina, Anaheim, uh, Chino, Oxnard, uh, Ventura, almost certain um, survivability. Even in Torrance, Mr. Gracie, survival minor injuries um, i will say some of the stuff they say is survivable with treatment you're probably not going to get treatment right away so you're probably going to die in that circumstance changing this over to a 250 kiloton warhead same kind of thing and this is really i thought fascinating here was even with the reduced warhead yield um they're predicting in this model simulation that even being in a thousand foot underground bunker concrete bunker you're still going to crushed it takes a significant um 
be significantly underground, significantly reinforced in order to survive a direct hit from a uh, nuclear warhead of anything of significance, 100, 100 uh, kiloton yield or higher. Um, but again, smaller warhead yield, less, much less overall casualties, and much more survival in the surrounding areas. Now I'm going all out. Biggest warhead ever detonated. 50 megaton Tsar Bomba. I'm detonating it from the same height it was detonated in its test, which is approximately 13,000 feet or 4,000 meters, just shy of 4,000 meters. So, again, largest warhead ever detonated in testing. Never a viable transportation system, but still, let's do it. Let's go all out. Let's see what happens. Certainly, everybody modeled here is going to die, right? Um, now you see, far larger casualties than uh, the 3.3 megaton one, um, far greater range as far as its fatalities. But you notice, even as close as Ontario to Los Angeles, still survivable. San Bernardino, survivable. Um, so a significant amount of casualties, a lot more people died a lot further out from Los Angeles. But nothing like what some people will show, which is that, you know, one bomb and everybody's going to die anywhere close by. Just not the case. Uh, but certainly in Compton, Covina, Anaheim, definite, uh, almost certain fatality of a 50 megaton warhead that's detonated. Um, based on the simulation, this doesn't factor in nuclear winter, doesn't factor in long-term effects, but it's far more survivable than people think. But if you're directly under the blast, well, certainly going to die unless you got access to a, uh, a level of reinforced bunker that um, very, very few people are going to have access to. Um, but it is survivable. Uh, you know, see, as far, you know, as close as those areas. Now, not to say long term. Uh, but just to give you an illustrative purpose, if you live in that greater Los Angeles area, this kind of tells you what happens. Thanks, everybody. Like and subscribe. I appreciate it.